next countdown, we have the Violent Whirlpool. Located in Scotland, the Corrigrium Maelstrom is a permanent, powerful vortex. In fact, this is said to be the third strongest in the world. And depending on the weather conditions, this thing can get pretty deadly. In fact, there are countless tales of ships being sucked into the Whirlpool's vortex. The lucky ones will just get spun out of control, but they'll survive. Not only that, but this Whirlpool can produce standing waves as high as 15 feet high. So you don't want to be anywhere near it when that happens. Number nine, King Tut's artifacts. The new Grand Egyptian Museum opened up in 2021, and while that's quite recent, the contents displayed inside certainly are not. For the first time in history, King Tut's ancient belongings, the artifacts discovered with him initially, will all be on display. Yeah, this is huge. Prior to this museum being open, we only saw around 150 artifacts from his tomb in entirety. They took all these pieces on tour, but now this museum will house thousands of artifacts. It's the final resting place for King Tut's collection. That's over 7,000 square meters of just Egyptian history all on display for you. It's pretty amazing. If you have a chance to visit the Grand Egyptian Museum or if you saw this King Tut world tour live, Nice, I'm jealous, I'm really jealous. Number eight, North Sentinel Island. Heading over to India, this island is the home of the Sentinelese tribe, one of the most forbidden islands in the world. But why, really, why? It's located in the Bay of Bengal. North Sentinel Island is about 1,200 kilometers away from India. And while most islands are shrinking or disappearing, this one actually grew back in 2004. Yeah, the island actually lifted up a couple of meters during an earthquake, so. It's getting bigger, gain an extra kilometer, nice. The inhabitants on this island are among the few uncontacted tribes left in the world. They've apparently been there for 50,000 years. There's no sign of agriculture or even fire yet, but somehow this tribe has thrived for this long. If we try and get close, they will try and drive anybody away with deadly force. In fact, back in 2006, two fishermen lost their lives because they got too close to the island without knowing who was on it. We don't even know how many people are on this island to this day. We have zero clue. They aren't exactly these ruthless hunters per se, they're just protecting their land, like they've done so for thousands of years. They're protecting this island from us, pretty much, and they'll continue to do so. Yeah, we're not getting close anytime soon. Number seven, Lascaux Cave. If you didn't visit this cave back in, say, 1963 or sooner, you lost your chance, my friend. Forever, yeah, officially closed. The Lascaux cave system is now a world heritage site in France. These cave paintings are 17,300 years old. Paintings that depict cattle, bison, stags, you name it. They're beautiful, they're complex, and of course, they're extremely old. So old that the cave was closed to the public forever in 1963 after it declared human presence wasn't too healthy for its Art. Yeah, our breathing would eventually cause this art to fade away. Plus, I'm sure somebody would have snuck in by now with a Sharpie had it remained open. 17,000 year old paintings, protect these for another 17,000, please. Number six, Surtsey Island. When it comes to new things in life, it's pretty rare we get a new island. Yeah, how lucky are we? We're even luckier that Disney didn't build a resort here. Nice, because now scientists get to study what an island looks like without human interaction for a change. Yeah, oh, we're nervous now, eh? We're like, oh, what's gonna happen with it? Is it nice? Is, it, is the air better? Surtsey Island on Iceland. As of right now, it's only open to a few scientists and geologists. Everybody else, beat it, pal, get lost. It was born from a volcanic eruption back in 1963, coincidence, at the same year that the caves closed. And scientists all have one rule on this island. No seeds, nothing. Choose something else, anything else, please. One guy accidentally pooped out a tomato seed and almost lost his job. Guy almost ruined the whole operation because he ate a tomato. What a stressful job. Better hold it, I guess, if you work there. Number five, Niha Island. Located in Hawaii, this beautiful island is also not a sandals resort, yet. Nice, that's, a, that's good stuff, what do you know? In fact, the population of this island is only a whopping 170. It's also referred to as the Forbidden Island. It was bought back in 1864 by Elizabeth Sinclair, and it's been privately owned since, hence the small population. The thing is, in 1952, the polio epidemic hit the islands and a ban was put in place. So now you couldn't enter the island or leave. Yep, better pack your nicest flip-flops, buddy. You're staying. Nobody got sick, which is a good thing, but now if you want to enter the island or whatever, you have to gain special access, which is a lot harder than it may seem. Even if you're extremely rich, you can't just buy your way onto this island. There's something going on there. For now, we'll just, you know, observe from a bush from afar. We'll just sit there with a telescope and have FOMO. Number four, the Shanghai Complex. Most of the details on this one are still unknown. How fun is that? Nice. We love a nice mystery here on Top 10. The Shanghai Complex is a massive underground bunker, as you could have guessed. It's 
It's supposedly able to fit 200,000 civilians comfortably. Yeah, it's over 1 million square feet, and it was built in case a nuclear attack were to ever happen. Probably, probably a great call. Probably some good stuff. This was a newspaper article back in 2006. Now imagine reading about this one morning while you're having your coffee, just all of a sudden an underground bunker. You're like, do we get tickets? How does this work? The Shanghai Morning Post touched on the new complex saying it's got massive protective doors, everything you need, electricity, great ventilation. It can fully support life for two weeks. And yes, it's very secure. No one's getting in or out. Number three, Svalbard Vault. Over the pandemic, I spent a lot of time playing video games. And a lot of these games always have a similar theme, I realized. I was like a post-apocalyptic, a lot of survivors and vaults. I'm referring to Fallout, that was definitely my go-to game. It's stressful but engaging, and in real life we have a global seed vault, and it's deep in the Arctic Circle, on the island Spitsbergen. It's this massive bunker that has since been deemed the Doomsday Vault. That's nice, that has a, has a nice ring to it, sounds calming. This is where humans will store food crops like all of them. It contains 100 million seeds, so if the Earth all of a sudden were to get wiped out by white walkers or all the ice melts, something bad happens and we're all doomed, well, this vault will be good to go long term. All that water that has since, you know, eliminated humanity, plenty of hydration for future crops. April showers, I guess? Number two, Denver International Airport. Since its opening in 1995, Denver International has been the subject of many myths. Some are pretty bizarre. I had to include it on our list today. Lizard people, that's the talk of the town. Apparently, they like to build airports on their off time, whether or not, you know, ruling the Illuminati. Yeah, so far it's believed the Freemasons built this airport or the Illuminati or lizards, the New World Order, something, someone, I don't know, it's haunting. The airport itself is massive. It covers around 52 square miles. There's gargoyles that are hanging out in your baggage claim. So yeah, the art displayed is odd, that I get. It does seem creepy for sure. But the airport has started to lean into it almost. They laugh with this stuff. They have a conspiracy month that began back in 2016. So they're like, yeah, yeah, screw it. Whatever you're saying, sure. They even showed a screening of close encounters of the third kind at the airport. What, imagine you're traveling and this happens. I'd be like, what, where am I? What year did I land in? I would lean into it too. Honestly, if I was hiding a secret bunker, the only thing I would do is lean into it. You know, kind of like number one, Area 51. Of course we have to talk about it. What is, is it real? Are there aliens? They're on the news. Is this a real place? Remember that Area 51 raid when everybody was determined to find out the truth about aliens? That big raid, you know, that massive raid with everybody? Everyone! We're not here for photos! We're here to rescue the aliens! Rescue. Okay, so it didn't it didn't work. I don't think I don't think I don't think we got in. We didn't raid Area 51, obviously. I mean, I don't know. A handful of gamers and tinfoil hats can't overthrow Area 51 military. Who'd have thunk? Because it's one of the most forbidden places in the world to enter. That's why. It's common knowledge at this point, but why exactly did people get arrested in tinfoil hats? What were they hiding? What did they want to break into? We don't know, but we're trying weirdly. I don't know, Reddit wants to find out. Coming in number 10, we have the Kokoda Trail. There are tons of places around the world that draw in a ton of tourists, but when you do a little research on them, you will start to learn that they could be a little more dangerous than you think. Like we all love a good hike going for a long walk and testing your body against the elements. You get a solid workout in, you bring some snacks to munch down on while you're walking about. You get to see some wonderful nature and if you're with the right kind of family, you probably get into 13 arguments along the way about nothing. The Kokoda Trail is one of the most popular tourist destinations in Papua New Guinea. People travel from all over the world to go on this fantastic hike and see some of the country's wilderness. Now aside from the regular hazards you might run into while you're hiking along Along this rocky trail, the Kokoda Trail is known for being packed with mosquitoes. While most of the time you shouldn't have to worry about these annoying bugs outside of the fact that they can be annoying and for some reason can't get a taste of your blood without being completely irritating, the mosquitoes there are packed with malaria. Yeah, you don't want to be catching that sickness while you're hiking around in the wilderness. It will quickly make you sick. On the bright side, you can take some malaria medication before you go over to the country to make sure that you won't catch this sickness. On the downside, malaria medication apparently gives you some wicked nightmares. So you won't get sick, but you might see a bog monster with a clown head and devil wings eat your whole family before it bursts into a 
million spiders while you're fast asleep. In our ninth spot, we have the Underwater Memorial. The Sunken Crosses of Malpeak is an underwater graveyard located in Spain. This spot commemorates a group of 16th century missionaries that were killed by pirates before being thrown into the sea. The site features 40 stone crosses at the bottom of the sea off of the coast of La Palma in the Canary Islands. The site was created in 2000. Locals created one cross for each person that was killed, and then they purposely had them sunk in their honor. So it is literally an underwater graveyard, which is cool, but it's also creepy at the same time. It is now forever a site to remember the horrors that happened to these people. Moving on to number eight, we have Jason Voorhees. Imagine you're swimming along in a lake, minding your own business, when all of a sudden you see Jason from Friday the 13th chained to the bottom of the lake. I don't know about you, but I would become like Michael Phelps and just speed swim my way out of that ocean. Here's the thing, there is a Jason at the bottom of a lake. Turns out that someone put a creepy statue of Jason Voorhees at the bottom of a lake in Arizona. The chains around him add a creepy touch as well. Turns out the statue was placed in Lake Pleasant in 2018 by a diver named Zachary Nagy. According to him, it took weeks upon weeks to make. When asked why he did it, he said that it is common for divers to place objects underwater, kind of to act like a marker. Apparently there's a poker table, fake skeletons, even a Christmas tree down there as well. But this one is definitely the creepiest. It must have given some of the divers quite a fright when they first swam into it. Now, Lake Pleasant Regional Park supervisors as well as local officials instructed Zachary to remove the statue. He didn't end up doing so though. But the creepiest part? When they went down there to remove it themselves, it was nowhere to be seen. Moving on to number seven, we have the underwater Stonehenge. England's Stonehenge is a pretty mysterious site. There's a lot we don't know about it. Like, how was it built? What was its purpose? So on and so on. Well, it turns out that there is a Stonehenge located underwater. It can be found at the bottom of Lake Michigan. There are a bunch of random rock formations that scientists have been struggling to explain, but it's believed that they are thousands of years old. What makes it even weirder is that on one of these stones, they discovered a carving of a mastodon, a relative of an elephant that went extinct like over 10,000 years ago. So they're like, mm, maybe this structure has been here since the last ice age. We really don't know how old they truly are, who built them, and why. In our sixth spot, we have the massive shark statue. So it appears as if divers enjoy giving other divers heart attacks. This time, someone placed a giant shark statue underwater. Holy, if I saw that thing, I legit would have a heart attack, or I'd probably just choke on the water and drown. The shark can be found in Lake Nucatel in Switzerland. This is 10 times scarier than Jason. Like at first glance, it looks real. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the sunken sculpture park. Located in the Caribbean, just off the coast of Granada, you will find a number of underwater statues. Some of them include life-sized casts of local children or a ring of people holding hands. Nowadays, the sculptures are covered in vegetation and in barnacles. The ocean has completely claimed them. So I won't lie, it looks pretty creepy, but it definitely is a place to see. In our fourth spot, we have the dead humans. Now, this is a very undeniably creepy art site. Located just off the coast of North Africa in the shallow waters around one of the Canary Islands, you have 200 human figures laying dead on the ocean floor. This was an art installation trying to highlight global warming. All the dead humans are said to be victims of global warming. This site is called Human Gyre and it is open to the public if you wish to dive down and see it for yourself. If you do, you'll see a ring of humans stacked on top of each other. If I dove down and I didn't have a warning about what this was, I would literally think that it was a portal to hell or something. Coming in at number three, we have the Dragon's Triangle. The Dragon's Triangle, or the Devil Sea, or the Pacific Bermuda Triangle, is an area where a number of different ships and military vessels have gone missing, which is why it's considered the Pacific Bermuda Triangle. Fun, not so fun fact, it is considered one of the most dangerous marine locations around the world. In 1950, a team of researchers exploring the area set out, and they never returned home. 
Their bodies were never found. And over the years, a number of US and Japanese ships have gone missing in that area. One time, nine American ships went missing in that area on a day with perfect weather. To this day, they haven't been found, and we literally don't know what happened to them. Moving on to number two, we have the Mariana Trench. The Mariana Trench is located in the western part of the Pacific Ocean, and it is the deepest part of the ocean. It is about 20. It is about 2,550 kilometers long and 69 kilometers wide. The exact depth, though, is unknown because we haven't been able to get to the bottom of it, which makes it pretty creepy. Scientists say that there could be sea creatures down there that we have never even heard of, but we won't be able to find out because we can't get down there. It's so deep that apparently if you take Mount Everest and put it in the trench, its summit would still be underwater by more than two kilometers. So yeah, it's really deep and creepy. And in our number one spot today, we have the ghost ships. Now there is an area in the ocean rumored to be incredibly haunted, and this is located just adjacent to the Bermuda Triangle. How fitting. So this is the shoreless Sargasso Sea. There's no shoreline, hence its name. Its boundaries are ocean currents. Not only is it filled with seaweed so thick that it floats on the surface of the water, but it's haunted. A number of people have spotted long lost ships floating in the area. When they pull up to it, no one is on board. Not only that, but others have claimed to see faces appear in the seaweed, as if someone was trapped in the ocean looking up at them. How creepy is that? Kicking off the list at number 10, WikiLeaks. Companies have to be somewhere, right? We're a film studio in Toronto. We go to work, we clock in, we clock out. This is a physical place that we go to. But where do places like WikiLeaks live? You know, where, where are all those odd safe houses, really? Well, apparently in Stockholm, buried around 100 feet below street level as an old nuclear bunker. Today, it's a facility owned by Swedish internet provider Banhoff. This is where they keep servers for WikiLeaks which is pretty hilarious. Julian Assange, front runner of this whole operation, his hard drive is in this bunker behind a two foot steel door accompanied by numerous backup generators. This guy will never get bored. Netflix ever goes down, he's good. He's got like two weeks of movies. In our number nine spot today, we have the Alaskan wilderness. Chris McCandless is someone I have talked about before on this channel. He is the man who inspired the book Into the Wilderness. In 1992, while hiking through the Alaskan wilderness, Chris came across an abandoned bus in which he set up camp. Unfortunately, he later found himself trapped in the wilderness due to the rising water in the nearby river, and this bus became the place that he passed away. Since the release of the book about his life in 1996 and the subsequent film by the same name, Chris's story inspired many people who wanted to to live life in a way that Chris did, or they just wanted to travel to the bus and see the things that Chris saw. Either way, this bus has proven to be quite a dangerous tourist attraction as many people have found themselves in a similar situation to the one that Chris was in. The nearby river has proven to be fatal for many people who have tried to cross it, which is certainly not the legacy Chris was trying to leave. Just last year in March, the bus actually ended up being removed from the trail. As much as I do wish it could have stayed where it was, I think the decision to prioritize the public's safety was the best and right decision to make. Coming in number eight, we have Snake Island. Have you ever wanted to go to a place that has a bunch of snakes and they're all over the ground and in your hair and in your cereal? If you answered yes to that question, you should probably go to therapy because that's just too many snakes. You should expect no more than a reasonable amount of snakes in your day to day, say maybe one to two snakes. But there is one place on this earth that could give you that many snakes, and that is, of course, Snake Island. This is a real place. It's not something a 14 year old boy dreamt up when he inhaled some vapor from a gas leak, or the premise of some bad movie from the 90s that has both LL Cool J and Mariah Carey in it. No, this is an island off the coast of Brazil that is teeming with snakes. People have gone out to visit this horror show, mostly for research purposes, and I'm sure there are some people that are dumping bodies over there because no one is about to head over to Snake Island to find them. There are many different species of snake that live on this island. You better believe that there's a good chunk of them that are poisonous. I couldn't think of a worse travel destination. Not only would you 
to be attacked by snakes the entire time, but no one would come to the island after to recover your body because it would be too dangerous, and there would be a good chance that your corpse would be munched on by all the slithering demon creatures that call this place home. In our number seven spot today, we have Death Road. North Youngest Road has the nickname Death Road, and honestly, when you just look at it, you can totally understand why. This 69 kilometer road is full of hairpin turns, and of course, it is on the side of a mountain. Not to mention the fog, landslides, and waterfalls. It was so dangerous that until 1994, there were at least 300 drivers a year who were getting killed on this road. This road connects the Amazon rainforest to the capital city, so it was happening very often. Often that salespeople would cram into trucks or buses filled with their wood and crops in order to try and sell them. The issue, however, was that these sharp turns were not wide enough for these larger vehicles, which would of course lead to them falling off the edge of the cliff, which was always fatal. There have certainly been steps taken to make the roads slightly more safe for tourists, but it still remains one of the more dangerous places in the world. It is such a shame though because it looks absolutely beautiful. Coming to number six, we have Omayakan. How about the coldest place on earth where people actually live? You know that if you take a trip somewhere, you can pick a spot that has beautiful sunshine, fruits that are so fresh, they were literally just picked off the vine before they touched your lips, and food so good that you'll eat until you're rolling on the ground moaning like a llama giving birth. Well, even though that sounds like a no brainer when choosing your next travel spot, it turns out that some people will choose to visit a place that has none of those things and the chance of losing all your fingers and toes to frostbite. Welcome to Omayakton, where it regularly sits at negative 40, the coldest inhabited city in the world. This place is in Siberia and it's so cold there that there is only about 500 people who have been able to live there. They do know that they can leave whenever they want, right? There's a whole world out there waiting for them. The people there can't grow any sort of vegetation so they live off mostly fish and reindeer meat. That sounds like an exciting experience for your palate. One of the biggest tourist attractions there is a massive thermometer that shows exactly how miserable you should be every day. And one time it got so cold that it broke. Also, if you want to leave, you better plan ahead because the closest airport is 500 kilometers away. <laughs> in our number five spot today, we have Bikini Island. Bikini in the Marshall Islands was once inhabited by around 170 islanders until 1945 rolled around. The US president at the time, Harry Truman, ordered that the military continue to test nuclear weapons just in case they were needed in the future since this was just shortly after the end of World War II. Unfortunately, Bikini was the place that was chosen to be the testing site since all planes and ships traveled on routes that weren't close to the area. The residents of the island were asked to vacate for the good of mankind and to end all world wars, to which they of course obliged, under the impression that they would one day be able to move back. In 1954, the military detonated one of the most powerful weapons, Castle Bravo, which was 15 megatons, which is extremely large. This combined with the 22 other nuclear weapons that were dropped, the island saw some extremely deadly levels of radiation that left the residents unable to return until the 70s. But of course, just shortly after this, they realized that there were still higher levels of radiation than they thought, which left the island unsafe to live on. Bikini still remains uninhabited, but apparently there are people who try diving into the water surrounding it, but I just don't think I'd take that risk. Coming to number four, we have Oak Island. Do y'all like treasure? Heck yes. Do y'all like spooky stories about treasure? Heck yes. Do y'all like getting stuck in a trap while you're trying to find some treasure and then being lost to the world you know? Well, that's what's been going on over at Oak Island for years. If you don't know, there's a place called Oak Island that apparently has a massive treasure on it and no one has been able to find it. Treasure hunters come there all the time to try and dig up the booty, but here's the thing. There's a bunch of booby traps on the island. So many that people have actually lost their lives while trying to find the treasure. So be careful if you ever head over there because you never know what sort of defenses could be hidden to protect the treasure. Coming in at number three, we have the Paris catacombs. What did Paris do in the 18th century when they were overflowing with bodies? Well, they dug them all out of the ground and they built an entire tunnel system to put over six million people worth of remains down there. You can go visit them and I bet there's no ghosts down there. There's even rumors that some sort of beast lives in the catacombs and eats people who gets lost and there have been secret 
separate raves that take place, and no one knows if these raves are actually held by people who live on the surface, or some sort of strange mole people who like EDM and live in the tunnels. Who knows? Coming at number two, we have North Korea. I mean, do what you want with your life, but this place has always been sketchy to me. I mean, I would never want to go there because we have done so many videos on this channel about what might be going on in that country, and what if one of the Kim Jongs or someone in the government over there loves watching top 10 stuff? Then they saw one of these videos and they're waiting when I cross and they arrest me. They lock me up in some weird prison and then that's the last you see of me. Yeah, that's not the way I want to go. Also, there's apparently a secret prison over there where they do horrible things to people and if you even want to get in the country, you need to get special permission. Also, I don't know if there's anything worth checking over there. So it would be risking it all for something that might not even be worth it. In our number one spot today, we have Mount Cinnabung. Sumatra is an exceptionally popular tourist destination for a multitude of reasons, but one of the main ones is of course Mount Cinnabung. It is obviously extremely beautiful, but the 8,000 foot tall mountain is a fully active volcano. It had a large eruption for the first time in almost 400 years in 2010, and ever since then, the four craters on this volcano have been very, very active. Since it's such a popular visitor destination, sadly when the eruption in 2010 happened, there were two people who lost their lives. Do you think this would be the only incident? But there were more lives lost when the volcano erupted again in 2014, and even more when it erupted again in 2018. There have been evacuations at other points during the years due to the fear of a large and catastrophic eruption. I feel like that's the downside to living in a place like this. It's obviously extremely beautiful, but then you just have to live life constantly on the edge, not knowing if you're city is about to melt to the ground. The mountain still remains open for tourists, but you are urged to hike with a guide. 